Okay, hi folks, welcome to the Self Love Sessions. So today I'm joined with the lovely Kerry um, and we're going to be talking about the path within and the relationship between self-love and spirituality. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I have loads and loads of my students, my Kundalini students, asking me why we're practising the path of going within, uh, what has spirituality got to do with self-love? How can the spiritual path, which we'll talk about what that actually entails uh, throughout the podcast, actually help me to, to come back to a deeper sense of real self-love and understanding of oneself? So, Kerry, um, I'll move it on to you. First of all, welcome. And I'm really happy to have you because I don't know if anybody's checked out Kerry's Instagram account, but uh, she's just speaking uh, good, real stuff. Um, so, yeah, welcome. Give us a little introduction about you and what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. Hey, everybody. My name's Kerry Kay. And yes, I do have channels all over social media. You'll find me pretty much everywhere. And uh, my role is a very important one. It's one that I resisted for most of my life, Polly. I decided that I would much better be suited to working in the corporate world than putting myself out here and speaking truth because I knew from the get-go, if I bring truth to humanity, there's going to be bows, there's going to be arrows, they're going to be faced my way. Do I want that? No. The corporate world seemed much more inviting, much easier for me, and I pursued that path for many years. But you know what it's like when you've got a purpose, spirit speaks to you, and it won't let you go. And that's exactly what happened in my world. Nothing worked out. Bottom no. line. Nothing in my world worked I out. I can relate to that. Until I said, okay. Gulp. <laughs> okay. Universe, I'll do it. I'll I'll speak truth. And I'll get brave. And that's what I had to do, Polly. I had to get really brave and understand that if somebody shoots a poison arrow my way, I don't have to pick it up. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I I legitimately thought that I had to answer everybody's criticism. I legitimately thought that I was answerable to people. It's been a revelation to me to understand that I get to speak truth to humanity and those who are ready to receive it, they go with it. And those who are not, I'm not, I'm not going to spend time trying to convince anybody that they're made of love and that they're multidimensional and that they're beings of divinity and that we live in a false matrix. It's those people who hear me speak about those things that go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. So it's a very specific type of person I'm speaking to, and that is truth seekers. I'm a spiritual warrior, and we live on a planet right now where the spiritual warriors are paving the path forward. And they need us, Polly. They need you and me and people like you and me to be voices for them so that they can understand we're not alone. We're not abandoned. We're not left behind. We're actually doing a damn good job. And this is how we can do an even better job. So that's what I see my role as being right now, a voice for the very courageous light warrior who's already undertaking some kind of soul purpose, a path of soul purpose. Absolutely. And um, because I suppose, I mean, exactly, I can completely relate to what you were saying about nothing worked out. And I think a lot of people um, are going to be going through a transitional stage at the moment where things are falling apart. They're not working out. Yes, they've stopped their corporate job or something in any of the jobs that they've been involved with, even certain relationships, locations, all of these different things. They're going to start to um, not quite align with their heart and the heart is what's going to come forward. And I think that transition is extremely challenging. And it's some, sometimes you just, there's nothing you can do about it. You just get led down that there's a point, you just get led down that and everything falls aside and um, it's a challenge. So I think there needs to be people speaking up about these these challenges yeah. yeah you know I saw the things that I've spoke I've heard you speak about is stuff that I saw in the spiritual community I saw and I witnessed it for many years a lot of untruth a lot of misdirection a lot of what I would call the frilly fairy tale I saw so much of that <laughs> you know and I just went 
oh, that's, there is so much more. And the truth is that truth is only about a million times more beautiful than any fantasy and fiction can be. But we've got to get courageous. We've got to get super courageous to really step into that truth. And that's what I see my role as being, helping people to get into their own higher truth. I completely agree. agree. I always say there's a huge difference between nice and kind. Nice can be very sugar-coated and everybody likes the nice person. But the, the kind person might do things that might come across as, um, well, it, a mirror for somebody it might trip because somebody somewhere along the line, but really they're uh, coming from a deeper a deeper space of truth and um, unconditional love instead of it being sugar-coated. And I think um, I can definitely agree with you. It can be a challenge to come from that space of it's not necessarily nice. It's not what somebody always wants to hear, but it's sometimes what we might need to hear. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and, and what I've learned, which really gives me so much courage, is that people are ready. I've learned that it doesn't work to sugarcoat things anymore. I've learned that people are much more capable and courageous than I ever gave them credit for being. But the more truth I give them, the more I sit in front of them, Polly, and I tell them about ascension and what it's actually going to look like and that we do live in a false matrix and why, the more I sit in front of them and I share this level of truth with them, the more I see this courageous light from within yeah. them step forward to receive that truth as if they're going, yeah, stop babying me. Stop treating me like I'm spiritually incapable and yeah. not involved enough. And it's, it's given me a very strong sense of awe and wonder at who I'm really dealing with here because they're wow. nothing like what Hollywood presents them as. Hollywood presents humanity as mindless zombies. But yeah. when you actually speak to them at the level that you and I are speaking to them from, wow, they are masters in disguise, but they are masters nonetheless. Definitely, definitely, absolutely agree. So what I wanted to um, ask you first and foremost was if you could share your perspective on the, the spiritual path, spirituality, and how that relates to coming back to a deeper sense of self-love. Because I suppose for me, when I first started down the path if that's the way to describe it um I came into you know certain practices and certain tools and meditation and all of this sort of stuff to be just simply feel better about myself mm -hmm. and um I always describe to to lots of people in my community that for me self-love is about feeling safe, just being yourself, being every part of yourself and feeling that you accept every part of yourself and you can express that to the world. So it's it's an element of feeling safe within that space. Um, what would your perspective on spirituality and feeling safe being yourself, uh, how would you reflect on that? Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful that you bring this to people because it's one of the most misunderstood topics. Yeah, totally. it's a, do you know, oh my gosh, I had a client many, many years ago, and this is when I realized, well, we've got a problem here. <clears throat> I had a client many years ago. I was talking to her about self-love and guess what she said to me? She said, but Kerry, I hug myself every day. I don't know what you're talking about because I was saying to her, self-love is the most important next step in your life. It's so important that nothing's going to work out until you can do this thing called self-love because she was really ill, really properly sick. And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And she she still motioned to me. She goes, "This I do this every day. So do you understand in her world, she's hugging herself, telling me this, this, this action. And yeah. And I, and I thought, what? So I said, no, my angel, <laughs> that, that's not self-love. She said, oh, do you mean I must run myself a bath with candles? Is that yeah, self-love? It, this was um, one of my questions and you've gone straight into it. Exactly. No, none of that is self-love. Self-love in my world is the following. When you strip away enough layers of the illusion, what is left 
What remains yeah. is love. It, and your ability to connect with the truth of who you are is self-love because the truth of who you are is love. And it's your ability to connect with that core essence self devoid of the illusion, devoid of the ego self, the false self, the slave self. All of these are terms that describe a version of you that you are not. And most people are trying to love that. Most people, when we talk about self-love, they're trying to love the illusion. Yeah. But it's like trying to love a puff of smoke. And that, really. and that is actually what you've just said is exactly why I believe that the spiritual path, whatever that may entail, because it's very different for, for different people, but coming back to using tools that bring you back to the present, that allow you to experience unconditional love for all things as a you a unity, as opposed to it being a separateness, a divide, or just a conditional love. Um, I haven't been able to experience that actual feeling apart from when I started to move down the actual spiritual path that brings you back to self-love. So I do think people might, some people may not have experienced what it feels like to come to unconditional love because that's real self-love, isn't it? It's the same love that you would give out to you and me and to your, your family and to the rest of the world and to a stranger um, on the street. It's the same love. It's love without conditions. And I yeah. think the conditions and the have been that have been the limitations and the different beliefs and the conditions that have come on top of that yeah. centerpiece, if that's the way to describe it, are where we're confused. But for me, the spiritual breath path brought me back there what would you think about that for you a hundred percent and I would even go beyond that and I would say it's the true spiritual path because we can talk about frilly love yes yes, yes you're right which is, which is the unreal love you know it's it's what my client was talking about when she was saying I, I hug myself or I run myself a bath with candles that's the frilly that's a show right yeah we've got authentic love yeah. which is the only thing that's actually ever going to satisfy a person actually yeah. is that authentic love. You can chase that surface level frill all you want, but it's that authentic inner space, which is actually a state of being. It's that which we crave. And with spirituality, we've got a surface level frilly spirituality where it's rainbows. Mm -hmm. and I love that word, frilly. <laughs> and I've got a little girl and she loves everything frilly. So yeah. it's a, <laughs> that's a very apt word in my world. So yeah, he, the the spiritual community is very frilly and 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 they talk about right you know and and again I'm being kind of um, tongue in cheek when I say this but they're rainbows and unicorns and they're love and light and and all of these things are beautiful they are indisputably beautiful but when you can engage with yourself at a level of authenticity a miracle occurs literally yeah. a miracle. When you can engage with yourself at a level of authenticity, it takes the courage of a spiritual warrior. It takes such a, a, a devotion, such a dedication to yourself. Yeah. Because the world is set up to tell you not to do that. The world is set up to yeah. tell you, listen, use the word, use the word authenticity. Yeah, and use the word self-love, use the word authenticity. Yeah, no. exactly. Exactly. But don't actually, I mean, that's silly. <laughs> Like don't actually get real. Don't actually get into that yes. deep stuff within you. Because yeah. what are you going to do when you get in there? But the crazy miracle is that when you do get in there and you find yourself at a level of depth that you could never imagine before, the whole universe within you opens up to yeah. you. And now you can emerge with your spiritual connection intact. And that is utterly essential. The two are hand in hand. The spiritual path and the path of love, it's the same path. Yeah. They're not different paths. It's the same path in tile, isn't it? It's mm. it's the, the path back home, back home to one's self and the the non set the 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 set the unity, you know, this we've got the separateness. And I think we try and uh, stay in that separateness as much as we possibly can because it's extremely, like you say, a brave person's path to move out of that separateness and to just be entirely 
oneself yeah. and love oneself is a very, very brave thing to do. Because I do think in spirituality nowadays, there's all of these different, let's call them paths that, again, they can be cultivated in a certain way that we come into some form of uh, conclusion with this. Like, how do I... Um, activate all my chakras and I want to have my third eye open and boom. Why do you want to have your third eye open? Why do you want your third eye open? Why do you want all your chakras activated? Why? Where is this coming from? Is it coming from a space where you feel that you're not good enough as you are and you need to move forward and once your third eye is open, then you're going to be a better person. Then you can love yourself. But this is conditional love. So there's a, I will love myself when I think still evolving in some of these spiritual paths. But I would say this was spiritual fashion. There's a fashion involved in it. Um, what what would you say about this? This sort of like an element where people feel that they need to get to a certain space in even the spiritual path and then they will love themselves once they've got that lovely cloak when they can hold a beautiful ceremony yeah. and they've got all the nice tarot cards right absolutely you absolutely you know you spoke so beautifully about separation and that's our original imprint in the false matrix that we were born to we were born to a blueprint of separation so everything including our ideas about spirituality and self-love were steeped in this ideology of separation but here's the thing about separation you spoke about self-love is when I feel safe I love that it's safe to be me and it's to be me fully but most people find separation to be safe and the reason they find separation to be safe is a tragedy it's an absolute outrageous tragedy because separation is the known so what they're doing is they're gravitating to the known and they're saying i'm safe in the known i don't know unity i don't know unconditionality i don't know who i am as a being of totality i only know who i am in my separateness so i want to gravitate to the separateness i want to choose partners in life to echo and reverberate that separateness back to me because that's my safe place that's my uncomfortable comfort zone. And, yes, and that's exactly absolutely. what a comfort zone is, you know. It's uncomfortably comfortable. So people gravitate to the pain of separation as much as it's harmful, hurtful, and toxic. They will unconsciously go to the hell that they know rather than the heaven that is unknown. Yes, for sure. You know? And and, and so... Comes in, I suppose, because that very sort of primitive brain within yeah. us is trying to keep us safe. Yeah. By going every time we want to expand and liberate ourselves, it goes, that is an unknown path. Mm -hmm. Stay safe, stay back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, stay small. So it feels unsafe coming into the path of liberation and being oneself because. It's like you say, it's unknown. So that's why I like to describe self-love as feeling safe being yourself because mm. actually getting towards that space doesn't feel safe. Mm. It feels extremely hard work. It's very courageous. You have to really move through a lot of vulnerable mm. uh, experiences to, to keep breaking away from that separate space and going, no, I, I believe in myself and I believe in unconditional love and I trust me. Is that's that does not feel safe. So that's why I like to say self-love is feeling safe being yourself because it takes that 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 sort of outbreak from the separation to be able to go towards that safety. Absolutely. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world, but at the same time, the hardest thing in the world, that the universe won't let you get away with it. It won't let you get away with staying in the discomfort of the comfort zone that no longer yeah. works for you, because eventually life will become so unmanageable that 
you're going to reach a place. And I, I know that many of the listeners are going to be listening to this kind of going, yeah, she's speaking about me right now, because eventually you get to a place where the old tactics don't work. The old coping mechanisms don't work. Yeah. And, and and it's, it's like, you know, the hell that, you know, you're stuck in it, but you've got to trust that there is a heaven that you don't know. Yeah. And sometimes life is going to lead you to this place that you can't move beyond because you're at an end point. There's a lot of people there right now. So a lot of people at that end point, they're going, I can't go beyond where I am. I can't go further as I am. Something has to shift. That's the beauty. doesn't look like beauty, but that's the beauty <laughs> of, <laughs> of how the universe supports you. You know, yeah. it's going to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a place where there's no more choice. Yes, that's yeah. very true. And that is, that is, a. you are right. It's a beautiful pivot point the tipping point like that book and there's many of these tipping points that we go through and I think as our sort of uh when we move down one direction of you know I'm going to come towards this feeling of unconditional love and how can I break away from anything that is holding me back from that very trusting abundant space every time you move further down that point there's going to be there's something that distracts you because the world is like you say the false matrix is made for distraction and it wants to keep you in that separateness and there's going to something that's going to bombard you from going I trust myself and I trust the divine plan and I trust divine time and I trust what's going to come next oh no you shouldn't do because this 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 and this and this this and this and it just creeps you back in but when you can move Past that little barrier of where where you've been engulfed back in, that is when you have formed that next level of self trust. You know, we always think I have to. Um, I have a lot of people who question come to me and ask me questions about: Is it okay for me to do this in my spiritual practice? Is it, is it okay for me to do this because this feels good in my energy work? And I always like to say, you know. There's no right or wrong. It's about a feeling within yourself of how to trust what feels right for you. And I think every time you keep coming back to that self-trust is another way to break free from that distrust. Yeah, and eventually life is going to lead you and everyone's going to go through this. Life is going to lead you to the point where there's one person to lean back into and that's you and that's yeah. that's what cultivates self-trust you know is where you're left with no other option now we can go there willingly we don't have to walk a very painful path to get into that place of like oh my gosh I've only got my own inner being to fall back into mm -hmm. right now it doesn't have to be as painful as that we can go there voluntarily yeah but if you if you look at what's gone on in the world regarding trust people have trusted all of the externals. I trust the government, for example. I trust the grocery store and the food that they sell me, for example. I trust the schooling system, I trust, whatever it is, wh wherever they trust is. It's not right or wrong. It's just that that's what we've been conditioned to do, to trust everything. That looks like our trust. Exactly. Everything that looks like someone knows more than me, I'm going to put my trust out there. And then what happens? Obviously, all of those people are going to betray us. All of those people are going to let us down. And then time and time again, we realize, uh-oh, <laughs> okay, I actually have, to, I can't get away from the lesson. I have yeah. to trust me. And until I do, I'm going to keep experiencing betrayal from the world out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's extremely true. And it's, it's a, and it's extremely brave to keep bringing yourself back inward. That's why I wanted to talk about, um, uh, path, you know, the path within. That's why I've called this podcast the path within because it essentially that tapping inward, continuous tapping inward, 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 uh, allows us to move back into ourselves instead of everything being continuously external and we we're still set up for everything being external every single turn around any single corner even in your house you have a bump or a nudge towards coming back to that fearful space whether it's the tv whether it's your 
iPad, whether it's social media, whatever it is, there's something that's trying to keep us out of ourselves. Um, so my next question would be for that would be, you know, we're talking about trust and we're talking about uh, self-love and it being an unconditional space that you can tap into that stops us from being so separate and it's, it, it allows us to come back to unity consciousness, I suppose. What tips would you give to people in their daily life to be able to tap into that space? Because it's all right us talking about it, but how, what, what spiritual practices or little tips, mindfulness tools, would you say would your favorite things that you would use daily to go, okay, I'm coming back here, not out there. How can I trust myself again to move forward? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of guided meditation. And I'll tell you why guided works really well for me. Because there's a lot of people who cannot navigate beyond the chatterbox brain. So they can have all the best intentions. I want to connect with myself. I want to trust myself, blah, blah. But the brain is basically on autopilot. So guided meditation is what brings you to that beautiful open space beyond your intellect. And when you can go in there, then you can begin the process of mastery. Mm -hmm. Because that's who you are when you can move beyond the limitation, and it is a limitation, of your intellect. Then you can begin to engage with the wisdom of your mastery, which is the love and the essence of who you are. So guided meditation is an absolute favorite of mine. Uh, yeah. I've got a shop full of guided meditations, and I have no doubt that you do something very similar with your people because you've got that energy, Polly. You've got that, that kind of energy that allows people to direct themselves into themselves. And that's what I want people to look for. Look for people who are living the truth that you aspire to and, and, and let those people guide you, but let them guide you to you. That's another huge tip. Don't work because there's a lot of gurus and teachers out there. Don't work with people that are guiding you to their wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> and to their philosophy work with people who are guiding you to you that's very very important that that point i'll just quickly um have a little moment on that point because i completely agree with what you're saying and i have a lot of people come in to me say you know i've done this training for example i've done this yoga teacher training or i've done this meditation or i've done this kundalini yoga teacher training or whatever and um who have come out of the training feeling a, a deep lack of uh, confidence because they've felt that they haven't been moved towards themselves yeah. and it, they've been moved towards you shouldn't do this or you should do that or this is how it's done or the, and what 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 would you how would you approach something like that because I always feel that this is a real challenge in courses and teachings nowadays that you know people are going down this certain path of a certain teaching and they're coming out feeling that they have a lost more of themselves mm -hmm. and they feel even more distracted from that center do you yeah. know what I mean by that 100 percent, and I'm so passionate about that because of the kind of questions that I get asked on a daily basis just yesterday on my Instagram somebody asks me this question saying a spiritual teacher told me, and then as I read that, I'm going, oh, God, what now? <laughs> you know, told me my third eye is too open and it's causing X, Y, Z, and, and now I'm confused. I'm so passionate about leading people to themselves yeah. that I support anybody who is like you, Polly, leading people to themselves so I teach people every week I've got an online community weekly 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 because it requires practice devotion you don't do yeah, this totally, totally. it's not like I did one guided meditation now I'm ready to ascend no, no it's, this it's, is it's a, it's a, it's something that must be ingrained into your life like brushing your teeth Hundred percent. The tools yeah. do. The tools need to because That's because it. of the distraction and the yeah. distraction is only getting worse as the false mm -hmm. matrix starts to break and we're Great. moving forward. Guess what? The piling on the distraction. Everything's getting shorter, quicker, moving yeah. forward faster, and it's just you know Great. it's the age of it's the information age. 
we, there's a lot of information it's making the intellectual brain explode so yes. you're totally right with the guided meditation we need to, need yeah. to rein back in <laughs> absolutely and just get home come home to yourself home, so right. so this is this is a profoundly important point is come home to you and to people who can lead you there yeah. And then once you're there, imagine what life looks like. Imagine once you've learned to self-source your own connection to God, to self-source your own connection to abundance, to self-source your own connection to happiness. You're no longer reliant then on yeah. all of the externals. You've become a fountain of wisdom and love and sovereignty and healing and wellness and vitality. And that's exactly what our purpose is on the planet for each person to become that fountain of love. But it gets ignited from within. Yeah. Another thing that I think is really powerful. It's such a simple, I love simple, right? Because maybe it's just my brain. Because like everything else is so overcomplicated. I'm telling you, and I can't do complexity. I, the moment... <laughs> I have a 16 year old son. He explains things to me and I'm like, I feel like the teenager because after the first two minutes, I'm going, Oh God, it's too oh, complicated. I can't, I can't do it. So simple is my language and it's the most effective thing. And here's a simple, simple thing. If every day, while let's just say you're brushing your teeth, even you're in the shower, whatever it might be, you take time to consciously be present with your breath. Yeah, which means it, it is and it's like you know sometimes something is so simple I call it stupid simple sometimes something is so simple that people go but how do I do that because it's yes. too simple it's too simple but the simple truth is if you don't change your breath like you don't say okay I've got to breathe five breaths like this and then six like that and then I've got to wrap my leg around my shoulders and I, <laughs> just just be with your breath just brush your teeth and listen to the sound of your breath and be present with the feeling of your breath while you're brushing your teeth. That is stupid simple. And it's, it's stupid the most simple. important though, isn't it? These that's where it is. Yeah. Back. You know, yeah. I, I always try and uh, teach how can we bring ourselves into this space? We're washing the dishes, be there. Yeah, wash actually, the dishes. Yeah. Wash yeah. the dishes with your breath and allow that to be a divine experience. Mm -hmm. Because it is, because you've just been given this gift of life and you are able to wash the dishes with your hands. That's pretty cool. And involving yourself into those experiences, which tends to come from connecting back to the breath, because it's the breath that just brings you back to washing the dishes it brings you back to our conversation it brings you back to that task then that test like a string of pearls just threading a pearl onto a necklace one thing at a time and it's the breath that anchors you to that space yeah so go go with stupid simple because it's always going to lead you to that silent inner truth and that's yeah. what you want we're, we're so used to chatter. We're so used to mental chatter that when we're outside of the mental chatter, we almost feel like something's missing, but that's the true self. And it's yeah. learning how to actually be in that space and to occupy that space beyond the mental chatter. That's the true self. Absolutely. So those are the two main things you'd use then, guided meditation and this mindfulness, this moment by moment awareness of breath and place. Yeah. And, and the third thing would be to really invest yourself in whichever way works for you to learn from someone who's already doing it. Yeah. Learn from someone who is living, not speaking, living the truth that you aspire to. Yeah. I think that's Absolutely. so important because we don't have a lot of role models that can show us. And that's very, very valuable. There's a lot of human beings right now on planet earth capable of showing people, um, how to connect with themselves by being the connection themselves yes absolutely absolutely and that was really one of my last questions was um if somebody was to think about a certain set of tools spiritual tools that they may have like to be guided towards by using a certain spiritual teacher or whatever what would you look for in a teacher mm -hmm. 
I would look for the most real person that I could find. Yeah. I would look for somebody who doesn't sugarcoat. I would look for somebody that looks like they're being themselves. Yeah. No airs. No. You know what? I get scared when somebody looks too perfect. Yeah, it's this very off-putting, I find. <laughs> Actually, I, I, can't, I can't aspire to that. You know, Polly, I had this, I had this crazy experience. This was a couple of months ago, where I'm I'm in my online community, right? And I'm just going off because somebody asked me a question. And you know, there's a saying that says there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yeah. I'm sorry to be honest, but there is such a thing as a stupid question. Yeah, there definitely is. It really is. Okay. I've I've asked stupid questions. They're I've asked of, many for the sake of I've asked many of them myself. Fully, right? So this person asks me the stupid question. And, and 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 it's not like I was attacking the person that asked me the question. I was just being very real. And I was going, guys, this is why you're stuck. This right here is exactly this person's question was highlighting exactly what I was talking about. So somebody took offense and they said, no, Kerry, when you get agitated and when you get irate, frustrated, whatever it is, you must excuse yourself, go gain your decorum, come back again. And I said, no, 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 no. You're looking for a perfect spiritual teacher. Yeah. I do not strive to be that teacher. No, 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 yeah, no, no. So I will show you my irritation because I'm not afraid of it. I'll show you my frustration because I'm not scared of it because yeah. I know that there's a divinity within me that can transcend all of those illusions in a moment and I would rather you actually see my humanness contrast that against the divinity that I can just as easily show you and then yes. you get a whole picture a whole person and that's what I would look for I would look for the most real the most authentic the most wholesome version of themselves that's very meaningful to me I completely agree. And this actually totally rounds up the whole podcast that we're talking about, because what you're essentially saying is transparency and in, in authenticity. And this is where self-love lies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're coming back to the, the topic of self-love, unconditional love, coming back home to oneself, how can we teach this if we are not being it? Exactly. Because it's a space of authenticity, isn't it? Feeling safe, being there. You got no right to teach what you cannot be. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Wonderful. Right. So I'm going to leave it there um, because it's been a lovely, lovely chat. But I would like to say, first and foremost, before we go, a couple of things. Where can we find you? Where can the listeners find you if they want to do your guided meditations or? Listen to your lovely chats on Instagram. Yeah, so the best place to go is my website, which is kerryk.com. K-E-R-R-Y-K. -R -R so many people spell my name with a C. No, it's Kerry with a K. K-E-R-R-Y-K. <laughs> kerryk.com is my website. And all social media from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. My handle is the same and it's I am Kerry K. Those are the two places you'll find me. Brilliant. And all my, all my content is there. Fabulous. And um, is there anything that you would like to end the podcast on? A little conclusion to this podcast? Yeah, it's what we've already said, but I want to really bring this home for those listening. And that is when you release yourself from the many layers of illusion, in order to access that core essence truth of who you are, just remember why you're doing it. You're doing it because you're love. You're doing it because you know that you're not that illusion, really. You're just acting on autopilot as the illusion. And the longer you do that, the longer you prolong pain. The more you find that courage to really connect with that inner core essence self, the more life is going to make sense to you. The more you're going to come home to a peace and a divinity within you and a wisdom within you that you couldn't dare to dream of. It's all there. It's all within you path with him 100 percent. yeah wonderful thank you so much for coming to uh, chat thanks. with us um and thanks for listeners listening um self-love sessions please tune in i do these weekly um and thanks for your support guys see you soon